Meg, I like too many games. I love too I many like games. I like way too many games. This list was insanely hard to put together. I love co-op games. <sighs> I have a lot of stuff that I feel like I've left off, but that makes an interesting list. We're doing mm -hmm. our top five co-op games, which makes a top ten list between the two of us, and we've picked mm -hmm. entirely mm -hmm. different categories. This is a co-op video about yeah. co-op games. That's true. That's true. It's now, a crossover. Now, the, the quick caveats that we both have to put in here, uh, just so they know, mm -hmm. I left some titles off of this that are cooperative games, but I primarily play solo. Okay. That's interesting. I didn't include them because it's not the experience I typically have with them. I think that's a fair call. Okay. Um, and my caveat is, and I'm sure it may be linked or something, but I already did a top 10 of my favorite games of all time yeah. on Jesse's channel. Uh, and there are a lot of co-op games there because co-op may be one of my favorite genres. So we're leaving out a few like Gloomhaven, Spirit Island, Arkham Horror, Dead of Winter. Uh, those Two are all our runner Two three that she likes. <laughs> uh, you know, lesser known games, all of them. <laughs> Here's the other thing. Professor Meg has actually started doing more YouTube content since I the last have. time you were here visiting. Do you want to tell them what you're up to? I have. Uh, I've been doing a lot more YouTube. I do a lot of first impressions. Uh, I do a lot of mail hauls, which is really fun and chaotic. Nice. Um, and I've also been on Twitch a bit for Camp Underscore Co-op, which I'm now just realizing that we're doing a co-op video. It does fit. It does fit. Yeah. We'll leave links to both <laughs> Camp Co-op over there on Twitch and your YouTube channel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the people that want to follow along with what Professor Meg is up to. Yeah. They can do that. And that being oh. said, <laughs> let's start this video. Let's do this. This let's is serious. This. Now it's competitive. No. Whose list is better? Leave a comment down below. Who do you agree with more? But I also get the four I just named. <laughs> mine are uh, <laughs> mine are a hundred percent ranked, by the way. Mine are two, I think. Five five to one. Starting at the top of the list and working my way down. You want me to start off or you want to go? I'll go. I have a very I think it's the smallest one in the pile the small, for us okay. to start with. Alright, alright. We'll start with a nice, fun little game. The, the crew. crew. The Crew is a trick-taking game. It's very unique where if you know any trick-taking games, usually you're trying to win the tricks for yourself. The Crew, you're trying to have specific people win mm -hmm. the tricks depending on the conditions it wants you to do. Uh, it's really, really fun. You can play it with a lot of people, which mm -hmm. I really love. And it's also a pretty simple concept that you can get people that aren't heavy gamers into it. Uh, it's really satisfying. It's, it's one of those it's one of those trick-taking games that, that does something new in that genre. Because yes. of the nature of it being a cooperative experience, your, your puzzle is not stealing cards from other players or tricking them into like having the best hand. You're actually trying to work together strategically mm -hmm. to make sure you accomplish whatever the mission is. And one of the unique things about both of these games, the crew mission at Deep Sea and the original crew, is that they have a ton of different variable objectives and storyline elements you can play through. Mm -hmm. And I also love this one to be able to play with family. Uh, if you're trying to get someone to play games with you, it's a lighter game. Mm -hmm. Something like trick-taking is easy for parents and stuff really to get the concept. It is a really good intro game. Yeah. yeah, it's really great to you know bring to holidays and stuff like that. Nice. All so, right. The Crew. Number five for Professor Meg is The Crew. Number five for me is a game that is here, not because I actually think it exists at number five, but because it is new enough, I have not played it enough to move it up the ranks okay. farther. It deserves a shout out. It's not just a shout out. Oathsworn is right now competing for, honestly, my top 10 mm -hmm. of all time. Mm -hmm. I probably need about 10 more play sessions of it. I need to get into some of the deeper missions. I need to see if I get completely brutalized at some point, which I already have in episode one. Awkward. <laughs> but I am loving what this game is. This is a cooperative adventure. It's It's got some choose your own adventure stuff, but it comes down to the base uh, that you're working with your heroes, upgrading their cards, getting new items and abilities as you play through. And it's a boss battler at the heart of it. So it's got really deep story. Uh, with your personal character's journey, a really immersive world, and it, it, if you know me, I love theme and storytelling in games, and then you pair that with these secret boxes that you're opening with these insane beasts and abominations and creatures, and then on top of that, you mix that in with the fact that the mechanics engine in this is so solid. It has this action refresh with the cards that you have in your hand where you're playing them around your board and depending on the strength of your attack, you have to play other cards into that zone to cycle your hand back down to give you the option to play the card again. It's got a really nice ebb and flow. It feels like it's balanced almost perfectly if not slightly too difficult. Ooh. And I am loving it. This is number five for me right now, 
but I believe you will see this on my top 10 of all time later on this year. Now, I got to see it so. at Gen Con. I have not been able to play it. I'm very excited to try it out. That's all I keep hearing is how good it is. And I just, I really, I want to get into it, Jesse. I want to really play good. that one. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Should I swing down to my number four? Sure. All right. My number four, I need to make, I need to make sure I remember which one my number four is, is paying homage to a game that you will not see on this list, which is Kingdom Death Monster. Uh, Kingdom Death just does not go on lists for me anymore. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. number zero. It's like it Gloomhaven fits for me. into every list you could ever come up with, and mm -hmm. I'll find a way to weasel it in. Townsfolk Tussle, though, is here. Another boss battler. This one does not have as much of the story, though. It does have great flavor text and great characterization, but this is going to be a one-shot instead of a campaign. You're going to sit down, play through a few bosses, upgrade your hand of cards, upgrade your items and abilities and the character that you're playing with, and continue just having fun in the loony, kind of uh, toony world that we have here. It's got a twist, kind of a Cuphead style and aesthetic on the uh, mm -hmm. on the uh, approach to gameplay. Mm -hmm. It's got a semi-cooperative element, which I actually tend to ignore because I just like playing through it, but it does have this bit where if you do the most damage or you get the last hit, you end up being able to, well, not really the last hit, if you score enough points from your secret objectives, you end up being able to get like body parts and pieces from the thing that you just destroyed, <laughs> which gives you benefits going on for the rest of the game. All of those benefits work for the same puzzle, which is mm -hmm. defeat the final boss, mm -hmm. but you will have one person get a sheriff's badge, which means they were the best out at whatever their objectives were, which is fun. Uh, Townsfolk is, Tussle is lovely. It's another one I haven't played, and it's one I've been interested in. I have another one coming up on my list that we won't mention okay. yet, but hearing that it's co-op, but with a top dog, it, that's a Professor Meg style game. It is 100% co-op with yeah. a top dog. I also still pitch this as the walk into Kingdom Death genre, or even the walk into mm -hmm. Oathsworn genre. Mm -hmm. Big box boss battlers mm -hmm. really do a good service if you introduce someone to Townsfolk Tussle first. The one caveat I have, for those of you that are playing it or thinking that you're going to pick it up, it does tend to run too long if you do all four boss battles, uh, which means my advice is always lean towards doing two or three and just scale up your marketplace and the cards that you have accordingly. All right, next up we have one. I'm a little nervous to tip this up because I know what the inside's like, but I will. Actually, sorry guys, I'm just going to quickly. There we go. Grabbing the lid off. Stardew Valley. <sighs> All my Stardew friends, shout out in the comments. Stardew Valley, I actually recently just got to play on Switch on Camp Co-op. Okay. This is a beautiful game. It is a love letter to the video game, which is so Are fun. Are you a video game fan? Oh, yes, absolutely. If anyone knows the video game, I have done everything in it except no. get married and get to the bottom of the mine. No. I didn't want to get married. <laughs> I so did I the bottom of the mine. I couldn't get there. But I've done, like, the whole wizard. I've done, okay. I've unlocked everything else, literally anything else you could do. I did nearly nothing but the bottom of the mine, mm -hmm. and that's still took a solid 60 hours of gameplay yeah. to process through. Right now, if you load my video game, I have a ton of stones in my pocket. So I'm trying to do that thing where it drops you down, so I have like 99, 99, That's 99. That's awesome. Um, so the board game is very similar. Have you played the board game, Jesse? Uh, uh, yeah, I have played, I've played ish the board ish. game. Even I read through the rules. And... Well, I read through the rules, and then I set it up and did like a moderate run through, just getting mm -hmm. the mechanics down. I have not sat down and played like a full session. It is pretty difficult, and if you saw what we did on Camp Co-op, um, any time that I've played, it is pretty tricky that you feel like you win maybe in the last round. You might not. I've definitely lost this one. It's I, I really appreciate that it's an adorable game where you have a farm and you are building up resources, you're planting crops, you're also fishing and mining and trying to get all different kinds of things to unlock the community center and make the Junimos so happy. So. It, I love that it's hard. I love that it's very difficult. It's a cute game. It's about farming. It's co-op, but it is very, very difficult. And I think for something like this, it's a little deceptive that it can beat yeah. you. And I really enjoy that. I like it when co-op games can beat you. I, for the record, since you're visiting more and more, would love to I play, would love this, to play with this with you. I would love to play this with <laughs> yes. you. Because like I said, I sat down, I've read through the rule book, I believe, two mm -hmm. times. I've set up the game on the table in front of me. I've messed with the bits and pieces, mm -hmm. but never made it through an entire game yet. I think it would be a lot of fun. I think it would be great because it it's not too bad. It, mm -hmm. We will lose, maybe, but at least going turn by turn, it's pretty understandable. <laughs> Come on. I want the games to beat me. Stardew Valley. You're number three. Stardew Valley. What do you My have? My number three. It's gonna be a little game 
Just a little game. Called Marvel Just Champions. Just a tiny game called Marvel Champions. Um, if you know my top ten with Jesse, I have Sentinels of the Multiverse on there. I do prefer it more. I very much love that game. But Marvel Champions is a new addition to my heart. This is a living card game. So you are constructing your deck based on the cards that you have. You can get new hero packs to get more cards mm -hmm. to construct new decks. Um, and they are constantly coming out with stuff for Marvel. As a huge Marvel fan, yep. to be able to play as Vision and Scarlet yep. Witch and and all of those, there's now a spider ham available. We just got that pack in. Oh, it's so cute. I'm so excited about all of these. Um, it's a really, it's really well done. I think it is very similar to Sentinels of the Multiverse, yep. but you're able to deck build, which goes back to like my TCG roots. I really love deck building and being able to make choices. And I like that sometimes how you have to change your deck to be able to move forward through the scenarios. Um, there are some where certain decks are better uh, and you just, you have to make those decisions or else you won't be able to win. This is one that was left off of my list because I play it solo. Oh, I thought you were gonna say because you knew I'd pick it. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, I absolutely love Marvel Champions. Mm -hmm. I have everything. Mm -hmm. It's deluxified in wooden boxes immediately over there. They're sleeved in dragon shield cards. I'm fancy. So good. However, I don't, I don't play this very often cooperatively. I love it cooperatively, mm -hmm. but sure is not a big fan of it. Mm -hmm. Alex is a busy man. Uh, and so I, this is one of the ones that like, if it's, 2 a.m. on a night and I'm feeling a good board yeah. game, I'll sit down and play on my own with like a bourbon next to me and then crash afterwards. When you do, text me next time. Yeah. Be like, hey, I just played Marvel Champions. Let me know how Great. you did. At Great. least that way you're playing a solo game, but you can let me know you I want. lose almost every time. Oh. Well, it's if you not, need encouragement. Not the best. <laughs> not the best. I, I, can build a, I can build one hell of a rocket deck, though. Mm hmm Okay. And get a real good rocket engine going up. I like focusing on one character mm -hmm. and really figuring out the, the nuance to their design. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, I'll move on. Yeah. But yeah, the last like six or seven times I've played has been Rocket. Yeah, I've only ever played with other people, so that's really fun that you've played it so I want to try that. All right, my number three. My number three. Another Marvel! Is going to be Marvel United from CMON. Now, this is here partially because it's a bit of a meme in our community. <laughs> but also, if you have the Kickstarter editions of this game, it genuinely is a really accessible game with a lot of unique storylines, a decent amount of challenge, especially scaling up towards the X-Men packs, because they, they started mm -hmm. really messing with stuff there. Uh, and it's, it's just, it's a really good cooperative experience. The thing that makes this so good for me is that you have all of the characters and they're, they're one little simple ability. They each have like three to four abilities in their deck. Mm -hmm. And those little abilities give you enough personalization that you feel like you're playing a unique character. You feel like you're playing the Hulk, or you feel like you're playing the Scarlet Witch. But on top of that, the fact that when you play a card down into the row, the other player triggers off of the card that you just played means that it's one of the it's one of the cooperative games that I've played where everyone is collaboratively solving the puzzle together. Yeah. And I like keeping hands and, and, and action secret. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I like leaving that little bit of mystery because it doesn't remove player agency from someone. You can do it where someone APs the whole thing. Yeah, but I, I think Marvel United works really well if everyone's making the action they want to make uh, and, and figuring out how to kind of work through the puzzle together. Um, and it's got an insane amount of variability. Basically, any Marvel fan that you can find can find a reason to fall in love with this game. That's awesome. Have I've never played, played this one, uh, but Meg. I'm so interested in the miniature. We've got so many co-op games to play I together. I know, we really do. Now, I want to ask, since we just had two Marvel ones come up, how would you yeah. compare the two? I mean, obviously, not to compare them, but which one would you rather so, play? So again, if we're talking co-op, I'm going to go with Marvel, Marvel United. United. I, I am. It's a, it's, it's a family-friendly, it's an intro mm -hmm. game. If I'm talking heavy gamer, though, if I'm talking strategy, mm -hmm. I'm going to go with Marvel Champions. Uh, they're, they're two different playing fields for me. Marvel fans would probably like both, and it really depends on the scale of gamer. If I could only keep one, if I could only keep one, I would probably go with Marvel Champions because I get it to the table solo more than I do Marvel United. So what you're saying, Jesse, is I'm winning the challenge. <laughs> it's co-op, but I'm winning. <laughs> What's your number? Wait, should it be my number? I think you're two. My right? number two. All right. You have to have played this one. Please tell I me. I have to have. Please oh, tell I me. Oh, I have. I almost, played I almost grabbed this one. Cthulhu Death May Die. <sighs> the insanity track in this game, the, the dungeon crawl nature of it, with a bit of boss battling there at the mm -hmm. end. There's a theme I like with these. Like, I like yes. an unbeatable foe that we all work together to take down. Mm -hmm. I love the art style. I love the direction. I actually am not a Cthulhu fan. I'm not a fanboy of the entire archetype yeah, of the Cthulhu yeah. universe, but Death May Die Don't does something. Don't say that too loud. He's going to get you. I'm just saying. He's going to come down and get Death you, Jesse. Death May Die does something different in this genre. 
I really love the personalities and the customization when it comes to the character boards. You start pushing up these tracks, unlocking new abilities, and the closer you get to death, the more strong and more special your character feels. And I do love the the theme that is often with different Cthulhu games, is that the more insane you get, it is pushing you toward the end, but it's yeah. also making you more powerful. And I really love that feel that yeah. sometimes, you know, taking damage or, or having bad things happen to you, it's still making you more powerful. Yeah. That's a really fun dynamic. I love it. This one wasn't on your list though. It wasn't, so I haven't played that much of it. I played the first two chapters, okay. then took a very long break and okay. went back and played them again. So I haven't played enough of Cthulhu Death May Die. I love it. I want to continue playing it. I had a great time. I just haven't. Yeah. I, didn't, I feel like you I didn't have more enough. Time. Yeah. You need more yeah. time. I almost picked it. For the record though, it's not on her list. It's true. It's I'm true. just throwing that out there mm -hmm. for, for the people who are looking for Keeping some score. evidence against Professor yeah. Meg. Played it, didn't like it that much apparently. But what is on my list Ooh. that I played from start to finish, Stop which it. we can judge Mr. Jesse for? God. This little known game called Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Yeah, there's my gonna be friends. like three people who like this. <laughs> That's it. So Gloomhaven proper, which is what I call it, um, is a wonderful game. It is a scenario-based cooperative game where you are using a hand mechanic where you can take damage to die, but you can also, you are discarding cards and that's kind of like your life force because you need to do actions to keep going within the round. Um, so. Jaws of the Lion was a way to make that a bit more accessible. Gloomhaven was first, it's a very heavy game, and then they came out with Jaws of the Lion that trimmed down a couple of the things such as like retiring and yep. your uh, prosperity track, and it definitely introduces the rules a lot better. Yep. It takes you slowly through it, it has you open certain packs at a time. Uh, that being said, as someone who knew Gloomhaven, I did skip the first three scenarios, which they suggest how to do and how to level yep. up if you yep. don't need that. Um, so it, but the storyline of it, also for those who love Gloomhaven, if you're into the narrative, this takes place just before. Um, so if you want a little bit of that history, this is what's happening right before you dive into Gloomhaven. For anyone who's interested in Gloomhaven, I highly recommend picking this up first. It'll teach you the rules, you'll get the story, and it's a better price point, so you can kind of decide if it's something you want to do or not. Um, how much have you played of Jaws of the Lion, Jesse? Sure, and I believe we paused at chapter six okay. together. Really enjoy it. Yeah. Really, really enjoy it. It's the logistics of getting a uh, a long form game uh, down to the table, mm -hmm. especially when mm -hmm. we do, when we do content creation. We're trying to film it, but uh, I like it. I like I like Gloomhaven a lot, with the caveat that it can sometimes feel a little repetitive. Every yeah. now and then. Yeah. Every now and then. And, and this is a small shout out to Crimson Scales. Uh, that is the fan main mm. Gloomhaven expansion. That one does a lot of different things. Yeah. So Gloomhaven can get a little stale. There are some times where you're just defeating all monsters and that's what you have to do. Uh, Crimson Scales takes that and flips it a lot. You have a lot of different kinds of conditions that you have to meet. So if you're a fan of Gloomhaven and you want more, that's also a great that's thing fair. to pick up. That's fair. Um, the one thing I will I've say got too it, about this. I've got it setting right over there and I have <laughs> began I almost, I almost picked it. that one. Um, but a great thing about this as well is that it's all in a book. It's storybook yeah. style instead of the tiles. That is so true. So accessibility wise, this one's definitely easier for you to table. Uh, if you're having a hard time tabling Gloomhaven and you love it and you're not sure if you should try this, mm -hmm. it's also easier to get to the table. I, I will say Gloomhaven is one of the tightest games I've ever played. It's so good. Every scenario runs you <laughs> right to the end of your ability to accomplish yeah. it and you feel like a real yeah. badass when you do. And and one of those things that I love about Dungeons and Dragons, which I think is similar to this, is it makes you feel like a hero. Mm -hmm. You're doing these attacks that are so epic and you're, you know, you're moving as quickly as you can and trying to mitigate things and the enemies are overwhelming you and it really makes you feel like you fought for that win. Yep. Mm -hmm. Number one. Number one. Number one. This is where they're really going to judge us, Meg. Should I do mine first? Oh, yeah. Okay. And I only didn't do this because Gloomhaven is up there in number one. Just to disclaimer, I gotta like give myself a break. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with Vagrant Song. Vagrant Song, similar to Townsfolk Tussle, only in art. Another boss battler. Yes, another boss battler. This one's also campaign style, scenario based, so you are playing through a story, and you are these people that are on a train. It is a haunted train. It's a bit spooky. Mm -hmm. As someone, I think KDM is too scary for me. This is just scary enough. It's the weird lore. Yeah. It's the it's the over the garden wall mm -hmm, lore. Mm -hmm. There's there's a ghost with like hanging skin. Mm -hmm. He's nasty, um, but you are trying to restore humanity to the haints on the train. So you're going train car by train car in the story, and you are you're attacking them, but you're actually trying to restore their humanity yep. so they can be released from the train, which I really like that mechanic as well. I feel like it takes 
a dungeon crawler and, and battling on its head and instead you are doing kind things you're trying to help them you're supporting everyone else along the way um, and I really like the action selection system where you get three tokens that you get to do for each of your actions you can pile them all up on one to make it more powerful or you can spread them out but once you do it when you go to do your next actions you can't use those again so it's kind of that puzzle of what you need to be doing at a certain time this one honestly should be on my list it's so good it was sitting over in the corner of the room mm -hmm. when you came up and you said hey I just need one I need one game for yeah, you yeah do you have vagrant song around mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. and I went great okay I don't need to talk yeah. about it. I, it doesn't need to figure out where it fits in I already have added context if I was gonna really really shoestring my list mm -hmm. into into what it should possibly be mm -hmm. Marvel United might bump for vagrant song yeah, I'm gonna have a real good. conversation about it if I'm yeah. really gonna look at it I love this game. Mm -hmm. Nearly through playing through the campaign, we're going to be doing a dedicated review over on Quackalope. But spoiler alert: there's I got a few I've got a few cat I've got a few complaints, but there's so much good happening here, and the way that it does emergent storytelling through the course of a boss battler, it feels like a dungeon crawl in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And one of the other things I'll say that I love about it, a Professor Meg thing, is the components. Um, so it's acrylic standees instead, which is so great for this art to be yeah. showing it. And even your health trackers and different things, the humanity tracker on the board, yep. are these flat heart gems. They are so beautiful. And there's also a little bindle that you're pulling tokens out of, and it's a plaid, like, hobo bindle. It's just, it's really well done. It's, it's not too many components. They're mm -hmm. pretty simple, but all of them are really well done. Yeah. This is a great one. It is. My number one. My number one. What could it be, Jesse? Ah, never played this. We have so many cooperative We're gonna games. We're going to play it tonight. Play. Meg. <laughs> Meg. I know. Lay it on me. This is Unsettled. I've heard, of, I've, I've heard many a thing. Okay. Lay it on me, Jesse. Unsettled is coming from Oneb, Orange Nebula. It is a masterpiece of a cooperative puzzle game. You take these modules, and so you have like the base The base game comes with two modules, two planets, and then your spaceport. So all the resources you need and your different characters. Each character has their own set of like action selection places. It's a dice placement game, but the mm -hmm. dice don't get rolled. They actually just tick down to count your resources, okay. and you're taking actions on the board. The unique thing about Unsettled is that it, it, it comes in planet systems. And every planet system, if you think of weird sci-fi, has its own unique twist. I've explored the rotting carapace of a giant space alien head with like mites that live inside and try to like consume you. I've explored underwater planets where all it is is pearls and luminescent beauty. Ooh. I've explored planets where the ecosystem is so perfectly balanced by a sentient being mm -hmm. that as you land you're charged with not disturbing what just happened and if you do everything starts falling apart. And along from what you're saying, it sounds so immersive that you're not saying there are planets you explore that are like this. You're saying, I've explored planets like I've this. I've done this. Yeah. Unsettled I love that do that. sets you into this system where the game is the same, but the puzzle is different. And the expansions they have coming keep iterating on that. I think it's probably the best, the best example of a modular sci-fi style game I've ever, I've ever came across. So if this isn't here next week when I'm gone... Yeah, that'd be a problem. No that'd one will real, know it was me. That would be a real problem, <laughs> Meg. I'd be pissed. <laughs> be pissed. I guess I'll have to come play with you then. Un un it's... <laughs> you all know from, like, when the last campaign launched, we did so many gameplays of this. <sighs> it's so me. good. It's so we'll good. We'll have to try it. Do you have any, any honorable mentions? I do have an honorable mention I have to throw up. Um... I do have the ones that I had. There's another one uh, I would love to mention, Mice and Mystics. Mm. Mice and Mystics is a game that I got into when I, not when I started the hobby, but I want to say back in 2017 I played it. Really enjoyed that one. I picked it up because of Will Wayne's Tabletop. Yeah. Um, and it, it is really fun. It's very adorable. It's very accessible again. Um, you're playing through a storyline where you're these adorable little mice and things like rats and scorpions and things are coming to attack you. Uh, I've got the miniatures it downstairs are great. still in shrink. Yeah, I, I haven't played it in a very long time. Yeah. I did quite enjoy it, though. That's that's one that I would like to do. So the one that I have to have as my number six mm. is a game called Paleo. Now, why is it at number six? First off, because five is too little. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But second off, because I don't actually own this game. I borrowed this game from Alex, yes. and I have been playing with him a lot. Like, this is one of the games that we just grab when we don't know what to play and we're sitting around the house. 
This is a cooperative game set in Paleo-America, where you're trying to uh, fight off uh, various different ravenous wolves and, and hunt down wildebeests or, or woolly mammoths mm -hmm. and create resources and just survive. And it has this emergent puzzle where every session you play introduces something new into the puzzle you have, whether it's a star mm -hmm. system you're exploring or a pack of wolves have shown up. And I really love that. It's Euroish in nature. It's resource management. It's it's tactical card play. It, it really feels closer to uh, an, a, a, an abstract puzzle in some ways than any of the other games I have listed on on my on my list. So it doesn't it doesn't really feel like it fits in my collection. And yet, this is the game that when I thought of a cooperative list first came to my mind. This is the game that that almost in a way defines one segment of the genre for me. And it's the game that has been on my list for probably the longest time so far of, oh, I need to I need to buy that. I need to grab that yeah. one day. There's an expansion, I believe, that's either coming out or came out. And it, it's just, you know how you have holes on your shelf and you know what fits there and you just haven't bothered filling it yet because you have access to it and you play it and mm -hmm. life is complicated. Paleo is one of those for me. Nice. I, I, this is another one I haven't tried, but I will have Meg! to. I know. I know. How can you call yourself Camp Co-op? I know. Well, I, I, have, a, I have a lot. And we'll do N+. Plus. Play through things, <laughs> like like... <laughs> things like Gloomhaven. Things like Gloomhaven take a very long time. If they I could do. tell you how many hours I've played in Gloomhaven between the base game, the expansion, Jaws of the Lion, and now online, a what, lot of hours. What I'm genuinely excited for is that what this video has done for me is it's, I have discovered a pile of your favorite genre of yeah. games yeah. that now I get to teach you and have fun and play. Yeah. That's cool. That's the whole point of these top 10 lists because the world is full of crazy awesome board games mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. our hope is just to share them with you. And not all of them are going to be right for you, yeah. but a whole pile of them. We don't always be. cross over on games, but I feel like a lot of these, I'm like, let's go now. Let's yeah. go play. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Make sure you go swing over and check out both Camp Co-op over on Twitch and Professor Meg here on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Do the follow button with your Amazon Prime rewards. Like down like below. Like five, leave a uh, comment. Who won nonsense. the co-op challenge? Don't leave that comment. I, we all already know the answer. It was clearly me, and I don't want Professor <laughs> Meg to feel bad and not agree to come hang out with me again. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Whatever the case, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. And go out and play some co-op games. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.